Hello, my name is Yannick Maus from TU Graz, and I will talk about locally checkable labelings with small messages. This is joint work with Akira Baliu, Karen Sansa Hillel, Dennis Olivetti, and Yuka Suvamela. At the beginning, let me summarize our results on one slide. We show that the complexity landscape for LCLs, the locally checkable labeling problems, in the local model and in the congest model is the same if restricted to tree topologies. And the same here really means in a strong sense. So if you take any LCL problem on a tree, determine its complexity in the local model, its asymptotic complexity is gonna be exactly the same in the congest model. Secondly, we show that this is not the case for general graphs. Here we show the existence of a problem which has a much smaller complexity in the local model than it has in the congest model. But what are these LCL problems? LCL problems or locally checkable labelings are graph problems whose solution can be verified locally with a very fast algorithm, constant time bound algorithm. So they're given by an output alphabet or different labels. So I depicted them here as um, colors and a list of feasible neighborhoods. And now given some input graph, you solve such an LCL problem on this graph if every node is assigned one of these output labels such that around every single node, the neighborhood corresponds to one of the feasible neighborhoods. What I hide here is that actually you can also have inputs to the nodes and refer to these inputs in your feasibility condition. And there can be larger radius neighborhoods. But an important part is that all of this has to be of constant size. So the problem itself comes with a constant maximum degree and the output alphabet as well as the input alphabet and the checking radius are all constant and they do not scale with the size of the graph. And we want to solve these LCL problems in a distributed setting. It means this graph abstracts the communication network and each vertex here has a unique ID. In total, we have N vertices and they communicate with each other through the edges of the communication graph. This you can send messages to your neighbors. In the local model, these messages are of unbounded size and the communication here happens in discrete synchronous rounds. So in one round, a node can perform some local computations and exchange messages with all of its neighbors. This paper is mainly about the congest model. Here, these messages are not of unbounded size, but can only contain order of log n bits. So this is merely enough to send a constant number of identifiers. And in the, both of these models, we ignore the local computation time of the vertices. And the time complexity is only the number of synchronous rounds until each node has produced its output. So for example, produced its label when computing the solution to an LCL problem. So what is known about LCL problems in the local model on trees? Actually, we do have a full picture of the complexity landscape. So on this picture here, what you see is the different complexities. And whenever there is a problem with a stated complexity, you have a dot. For example, there is a problem with complexity log n. And in all these areas where you can see an X, there's no single problem which has the respective complexity. So to say we have lots of gaps in the complexity landscape in the local model for trees. And what we show in this paper is that we have exactly the same picture in the congest model, exactly the same dots 
and exactly the same gaps. So what we show is that actually the local model and the congest model are equivalent on trees for LCL problems. And this equivalency is really in a strong sense, meaning if you take some problem and determine its complexity in the local model, if it's for example, log star of n, then it's gonna end up in the same asymptotic complexity class in the congest model. And this is true for these small complexities and also for these high complexities. Now I will continue in this talk with explaining how we actually obtain one of these gaps and how do we prove it and what is the respective algorithm that we obtain here. So formally, the statement here, for example, this red X, and I will now focus on this red X, but all of these X's up here are proven with a similar idea. This X formally states as if you have an LCL problem, which admits a local algorithm with complexity faster than order of square root n, then there also exists a deterministic algorithm which has complexity n to the one third. And this algorithm uses only small messages. It's in the congest part. This implies all these gap ups up here. And before we go into the details on how we obtain this algorithm, we do a warm up. We show a simpler result. We show something which is almost trivial or is trivial in the local model. We show that any solvable LCL can be solved in diameter time in the contrast model. In the local model, you can just gather the whole tree and solve whatever you want to solve. In the contrast model, it's not so clear that you can solve things in diameter time, but it's also not super difficult. So how does this order of diameter algorithm work? So first step, it decomposes the trees into layers simply by iteratively removing the leaves from the tree, putting them to the first layer, then again, removing the leaves and so on. So this loses number of layers, which is yeah, in the order of the diameter. And then we have two procedures, which are kind of like a dynamic programming flavor, where we first do an up propagation of label sets that are good for the node, so to say. And in the second step, we actually solve the problem where everyone finally picks a, a label. So this was probably too high level. So let's look a little bit more at the detail what we do here. So we begin at the leaves and each leaf reports to its parent the set of labels that it can deal with. What does it mean to deal with the label? It means if the parent V picks any of these labels in the set, the child can deal with it, meaning pick a label for itself such that its own constraint is satisfied and it becomes happy. So you just tell your parent, these are the labels I can deal with. These are good for you to pick. And then we proceed onwards. Afterwards, V tells its parent what it can deal with. And here, what can it deal with? Well, it got some requests from its children, what they can deal with. And it combines these to see what it can deal with. And we, propagate these sets of labels up to the top until we reach a root. And then the root doesn't have a parent, so it can just pick one label from the received set. And afterwards, we propagate these labels downwards. So in the downward propagation, each vertex then picks a label. And you can hear own words, just pick from the set that you received from your children. 
because if you pick from that set, you can deal with it. One can show that if the problem is solvable, you can also solve it through this method. And now, if you look at the gap between square root of n and n to the one third complexities, then the algorithm performs with a very similar spirit. So first we decompose the graph. And here we alternate between two procedures. The one procedure removes subtrees of height n to the one third. And the second procedure removes long path because you really don't want to have this diameter in the number of layers. And then there's a simple post-processing which breaks very long paths into shorter segments. So as a result of this decomposition, you get a constant number of layers. And each of the layers is of one of the two types. Either it's such a subtree layer of height n to the one third, or it's a long path and it's actually like only a constant length path because very long paths are split into these constant length segments. And actually it matters a lot what this constant is. So these constant length paths with lots of these subtrees hanging from the path. And once we've computed this decomposition, we proceed in the same way. We do this label set propagation to the top and at the very end, then at the very top, we just pick a label and propagate labels down to actually solve the problem. The propagation of label sets to the top for subtrees works just as before. We can actually just take such a subtree here and decompose it in sublayers and in the diameter or height of the subtree, we can deal with it. It's much more complicated to do the propagation to the top at this path because the path actually has two endpoints here. And you want to propagate something in both endpoints to the top. And what you want to reach here is that you propagate something that you can independently deal with. Because when you think of how we want to later use this, in the end, you will get just one label on this side within the set that you propagated to the top. And you will get a label on this side in the set that you propagated to the top. But you have no influence what you get there, so to say. So you should be able to deal with any combination of what you get here from the top and here from the top. And the highly non-trivial, very long proof by Chang, Petty, or also Chang, depending on which of these high complexity gaps you look at here, shows that there is something that you can propagate to the top which makes both of these propagations here independent. We didn't reproof all of this, but instead what we showed and what our main contribution is here is that we showed that it's sufficient to actually just propagate constant information to the top on both sides, which makes it clear that you can execute this decomposition and the solving the problem afterwards also in the congest mode. So we've already dealt with all these higher complexity range gaps here. And now we will focus on this red gap here. And we will use a famous result by Chang Petty, which says, whenever you have an algorithm which in, has a randomized complexity, and actually I should point to this picture up here, which has a randomized complexity in the local model that is little o of log n, then you can solve it by solving an LLL instance. I won't go into the details what this LLL is, but let's look a little bit more at our solution. So let us look at more detail what they proved and how their proof and result and statement works here to see that it works in the congest model as well. So what they showed is whenever you have a sub-logarithmic round local algorithm, then you also have a constant time algorithm. 
that only uses constantly many random bits. Unfortunately, this algorithm has a very high failure probability, but on the positive side, they showed that the problem of finding good random bits for this problem, for this algorithm, is a so-called LLL problem. And good random bits here means if you execute this constant time round algorithm later with these good random bits, then you don't err at any node. And clearly executing a constant time round algorithm in the local and congest model on constant degree graphs, yeah, you can just do it in the congest model if you have a local algorithm. So all we need to do is to find an efficient LLL algorithm on trees in the congest model. Such an algorithm is known in the local model, a log log n round algorithm, but in the congest model, we don't know. And we also couldn't devise one. Instead, we do something a bit more specific, which means we solve only the exactly occurring LLL instances that we obtain when using this approach here. So let me be very quick on how we actually obtain this and solve these LLL instances. At least let me be very, very quick on this first phase because this is very standard and we don't do anything new here. It builds up on the fischer gafari framework for shattering LLL instances. So we just gradually set some of the variables, meaning we determine some of the random bits here with a back off procedure and process nodes in a certain area and then remove all the nodes which have all the random bits set. The bottom line is here, after we do this, and this happens in constant time, we only have components left in the graph which are of size order of log n. And then we solve these small components here with a deterministic algorithm. This is very standard. The new part is in how do we obtain this deterministic algorithm. And for that, let's first forget about the size of the small components, but look at the problem that we want to solve here. It's a proper LLL problem because also on these small components, due to the back off, you need to actually solve an LLL instance, but we don't have this congest LLL algorithm for trees. And in particular, not one which is so super fast and just runs in log log n rounds. So what we do is we do a bit of a detour, which I find pretty cool. We first tweak this problem to obtain a proper LCL problem. What do I mean by proper here? By proper, I mean that we don't get any promises because the problem that you need to solve on the small components actually is a problem with input because around the small components, some nodes already have their random bits determined and this influences the feasibility and on these small components. So basically you have some input from the pre-shattering phase because some random bits are already determined. And because of the back of this pre-shattering phase is not just random, but it comes with some guarantees on these inputs. But what we want to have is we want to have an LCL problem which doesn't have any guarantees on the input. So we tweak the problem to actually get such a proper LCL. But at the same time, it stays an LLL problem, which implies that we actually have a fast local algorithm for this problem. And now this is what I find pretty cool is we combine both of these things together with the gap that we've seen before to also obtain a fast congest algorithm for this. So we show that on these small components, we need to solve an LCL problem. We can solve it fast in the local model. And because a fast algorithm in the local model for a proper LCL also implies a fast algorithm in the congest model, we obtain the deterministic congest algorithm that we wanted to have. Because now, if we insert the size of the component into this order of log n, deterministic congest algorithm, we get the algorithm on the small components that we wanted. I think this is a very non-standard way of developing an algorithm. 
So now we've seen our results on trees. So now let's look at general graphs and quickly have a look at what we obtain here. So this is the state of the art in the local model. So here, these green areas here and down here, these are dense. So dense set of complexities exist. These axes are again, gaps of complexities that don't exist. But there's also a big area here where we don't know what's happening. And this is for a similar reason, we know that a sublogarithmic algorithm translates to the complexity of solving an LLL, but we don't know what the complexity of LLL is. The best upper bound is poly log log n, and the lower bound is log log n. And what we show here, and yeah, please take this slide a bit with a grain of salt because we don't actually, but it's very likely that these proofs actually go through, but don't actually have formal proofs written down for these dense parts here. And this X here is due to a different paper. But what we show in this paper mainly is that there's, if so, these complexity landscapes here look very similar. It's the same picture in the top and the bottom. We show that they're not the same in the sense there is a problem that has very small complexity in the local model, very small meaning here log n, but exponentially larger complexity in the congest model. Interestingly, it seems like, yeah, we don't know, but it seems like below log n, we don't have such a separation between the two models. So this is a result that we obtain. We get a prepper LCL problem with complexity theta of log n in the local model and roughly square root n in the congest model. And this is not exactly the graph that we use for our result here, but it captures the flavor of what we do. You can see it's a graph with a small diameter, log n diameter. So any solvable problem can be solved very fast in the local model on it. And for our lower bound of square root of n rounds, we use a reduction from communication complexity to show that we cannot efficiently solve this problem in the congest model. And the difficulty is here not to just come up with some problem which is hard in the congest model on a specific kind of graph, but the hard part is actually to make this a proper LCL problem, which has neither a promise on the graph class nor the inputs that you get. Otherwise, it's not too difficult to come up with such a problem. So with this, let me conclude. Of course, one open question immediately continues here is, can we actually also get an LCL problem with a bigger gap? We could not manage to get an LCL problem which has small complexity in the local model and linear complexity in contrast, unbounded degree graphs. But the main open question is, for sure the complexity of the LLL problem here. And this is an open question in the congest and the local model. So the conjecture from by Chang and Petty says that actually there's nothing here in this area, meaning both of these endpoints here collide and are the same. But answering this conjecture in the local model doesn't automatically mean that we can also solve it and answer it in the congest model.